people need to hear your voice. <laughs> they don't need to hear me. They want to get us out of here. They want to hear nothing but Rodney. 24 hours a day of Rodney, Rodney TV. Tumbling, 24 7 live from Loretta Lynch. Now, I tell you what, man, this right here is another one of the premier classes that we uh, always love to see step up out here. These uh, riders in the transition from the B into the uh, A ranks. And uh, one of the names on here kind of standing out uh, is that of Matt Mar Max Markoff. Remember last year, he was sidelined, spent a lot of time on the announcer's tower. This year, though, he's back at it, and uh, he is racing, and he could be one of the big threats here as, as the uh, gate's down on this one. Riders rolling through the first turn and jockeying for position. we got a couple of KTMs sorting it out up front. It's 62 and 82. It's Markoff and Falk. I believe it's Falk out front, though. It is. Mitchell Max Falk Markoff. out front. Max Markoff is second. He I would say Jordan Bailey, or, Jordan Bailey or the number 83 of Marchbanks in third would be my guess. Mark off getting the credit for the Bell Helmets Hole Shot Award, the number 82 KTM out of Lancaster, South Carolina, as the uh, race is on. And we see now that he is uh, beginning to work his way to the front of the pack as we roll towards uh, Storyland. Yep, it's Mitchell Falk, and we told you earlier, he won six straight motos in the B-Class out at Freestone. Every hole shot, every moto win came in with a head of steam. Haven't seen much of him, got injured. Didn't get to see him out at Mammoth Mountain, but now he is back at the ranch where it counts. Mark off in tow. Trying to follow him around. We'll see if he can make it happen, though. Tall order. Falk has been tough all year long, and he's already starting to open it up. Yeah, these are some. These There's are like Jordan a, Bailey back there in the number three spot, the number 32 machine. So that's your running order early on that we do know. Falk, Markoff, and Bailey, one, two, three, all the heavy hitters. I want to see Garrett Marchbanks get up in there as well. Tanner, Tanner Stack. Stack. Looking for him, yeah. So another one of those uh, starts, but you know, that's the thing about it. Uh, we've got good long motos here, 20-minute uh, motos for these 250B class riders. So we'll have plenty of opportunity to get things sorted out and uh, for these riders to prove who's who and what's what here. Look at this, already tightening up and uh, things, uh, though they started stretching out and riders have established themselves. Look at the running order that we see working their way toward the finish line and wrapping up this first lap of racing. And look at the position jockeying going on through about the top 15 right now. Falk out front, Mark off in the number two spot as they check in. Jordan Bailey back in the number three position. It's Dylan Walsh, the number 53 in fourth. Cameron Cannon, the 33, is fifth. Dylan Greer, the 77 and sixth. Seventh is Luke Hempen. Hempen on the number 20 Yamaha in eighth spot. Wyatt Lionsmith aboard the number 85. Ninth place, Austin Winslow, the number 50. And Derek Kelly, the number 27, rounds out your top 10. This first lap sees the uh, 11 spot, the 80 of Matthew Gross. Twelfth is uh, Andy Dinical. Then we got DJ Christie, the 47 in 13th. Zane Merritt in 14th. Levi Newby is 15th. Carter Gordon in 16th. Uh, Kobe Hefner is back in 17th. David Milana, 18th. Dustin Turner, 19th. Nathan Hamlin rounds out your top 20 after lap one. Man, look at that. Dead last, the number 95 of Jake Masterpool. This guy should be winning motos. And Garrett Marchbanks as well. I was looking for both those guys. Those guys are championship contenders and they are buried in 40th and 41st. Not sure what happened on the start, but obviously some bad luck for those two kids. They should be up front for sure, racing with Falk, Markoff, and Bailey. I tell you, can, conditions. Jordan Bailey, the, uh, he is a benefactor of a year at MTF now. He's homeschooled. He's been doing this whole program for a year now. Normally, Jordan goes all year long, regular school, and for the summer, he can go wow. train like everybody else, and that has seemed to kind of hinder his growth as a rider and he, it's really paying dividends because Jordan's one of the players in his class now, as you see, as he's going after Max Markoff. Yeah, battle for second starting to heat up here now as Jordan Bailey rolling up on the rear wheels there of Max Markoff. Uh, saw a couple, almost three-second gap between those two as they came through the finish line there a few moments ago. But uh, here on lap two, I think we're starting to see that tighten up just a bit. Yeah, you're going to see a good battle here. They uh, went at it. Out at Mammoth, they're doing it again right in front of us. And all the while, Mitchell Falk starting to creep away. The Red Bull Orange Brigade KTM rider starting to pull away, and he has already come through, hit the stripe. Falk is on his way to start his second lap, and here comes the boys back in the number two and three spot, the 82 KTM of Will Markoff, the green Kawasaki of Jordan Bailey giving chase. Down behind this uh, 
billboard. This is uh, where a lot of things take place over tradition and uh, over the course of time. We've you already seen called it. Yeah. Uh, we see that uh, things happen already there er earlier in some of those 85 cc motos and almost something taking place there. But Markoff still maintaining that number two position. I think he's pretty much forgot about Mitch Falk, who's out front right now. And, and rightfully so, as Bailey's all over the back wheel back there. And then there's a little bit of a comfort zone, about five seconds back to the fourth place right of Dylan Walsh. And Cam Cannon now starting to do a little bit of battling as they're running nearly identical lap times in the number four and five spots. Through the Ten Commandments, we roll in this battle for the number two spot. Markoff is uh, still holding on to the number two spot and uh, heading into Storyland. We'll see whether or not uh, Jordan Bailey has got some advantage. Look at the drive he's getting heading into this back section, pulling up nearly side by side now for the second place position on the outside. Heading back, he's way up high on the outside of this turn. It's a drag race coming past the work area and it looks like Markoff may have this one still with an advantage as we head toward the Rocky Mountain sweeper turn. Only a couple of bike lengths and that could uh, change right here in the big sweeper turn. Got to be careful with your line choice. Typically we preach run that different line all the time. Don't sit in behind the guy in front of you but that cost Jordan Bailey. He got into some of that super thick soupy stuff and it really cost him some time so he's got to play his cards here and be smart with those different lines. He's trying to run the inside line. Sometimes it works out, but when this track is so muddy, usually the best racing line is where you want to be until you have to get off of it and make that pass and dive bomb the guy in front of you. Oh, here he comes on the outside now, heading through the sweeper turn. Believe that Markov still might have the advantage heading into that final turn, but you can see that uh, he is, but Jordan Bailey, searching out every inch of this racetrack that he can. And sometimes it'll bite you, like you said, and other times it, it may work in your favor. And uh, today is one of those days it's uh, kind of up in the air, man. It's a 50-50 shot for you. How about the lap times? Looking like uh, we're going to approach the two-minute mark. A 2.04 for Mitchell Falk on lap number two. So Falk kind of putting this racetrack together. And this battle right here is probably hindering them just a little bit as far as putting down serious lap times. They are starting to slug it out. Yeah, and everybody else starting to settle into pace. This seems to be the uh, only contested position right now throughout the top 10. We we'll, may see something change over the course of this lap, but right now everybody a couple, three seconds apart at least. But these two up front who are less than a second, Max Markoff in the number two spot and Jordan Bailey there in the number three spot. Well, it's good to see Garrett Marchbanks now starting to get back on track. He's put two laps in the book, so that means Garrett's able to get back on the bike. He's not injured. His buddy Ty Masterful has climbed up to in the teens now. So Ty's passed half the field wow. when he sat in 41st on the first lap, moved up to 22nd, so he passed 18 riders, and now he continues to creep forward. Impressive ride, no doubt. This is where damage control is done. And, and, and quite honestly, this is when championships are won as well for these riders that have the uh, worst of starts like that. If they can be a, somehow or another find their way to the front of the pack and, and salvage something respectable out of this, they put themselves back in position. Speaking of position, looks like that uh, Bailey trying to position himself for the number two spot as he swings out way wide now heading over the Rocky Mountain. A perfect they cross set of mistakes by both of them. <laughs> like somebody shot Mark off with a tranquilizer gun. He was like, <laughs> and he found power again and stood back up. That was bizarre looking. Wow. And all the while Bailey went to the outside and got caught up in that soft stuff as well. So we're right back to where we started. Still Bailey has eaten three pounds of mud <laughs> off the rear end of that number 82 machine. Sam blasting that front number plate, no doubt. Last There's turn. another oh, problem yep. from Markoff, almost stalls it again. But right behind him is uh, the 32 of Bailey, so he can't really take uh, much of advantage of that. It's, there must be a hole starting to develop there. Watch that turn next time around. I think that is actually that line that is There's starting. There's holes developing <laughs> everywhere, no <laughs> doubt about it. That's a good call. Rodney's stating the obvious. Going towards the mechanics area, Markoff's going to look over. Whatever, I just got to put the hammer down. I don't even have time to look at my mechanics board. It'd be tough to, in this kind of competition right now to be able to look over and try to focus on what they're trying to tell you. But the good thing about it right now, you're right, I think Markov might have this covered because he is starting to find a little bit of comfort right now as we head into the heart of the racetrack now approaching the Ten Commandments section. And as you say that, it looks like Jordan Bailey comes swooping in. He wants to make another run, and he's doing it. He doubled right past Markoff. Now we're going to see how this thing finishes off. They're going to drag race to this right-hander. And Markoff, oh, and mm. Bailey, without the aid of that electric start, that could have 
could have been an issue there if he'd have stalled that machine. It's a big break there for Max Markoff as uh, Jordan Bailey nearly stalls it out. Cam Cannon 11 and a half seconds back, so they've got a little room to breathe there. If something does happen between the two, but man, heck of a ride for Jake Masterful, who is now in 11th place. He has passed 29 riders from that first lap when he and March Banks and the rest of the guys had some issues on that first lap. And here we go again, carbon copy. Bailey can make up the time, just can't put the pass together. Well, Markoff again comes through that tranquilizer turn a little better this time. <laughs> That's a battle. On the inside again, Bailey is relentless, and he's going to make the pass. Wow. So Jordan Bailey has gotten around Max Markoff. Well, he searched it out and searched it out. It took a few laps to get it sorted out. And once he does, he's able to muster up that second place position. So now Bailey solidly in the second. It looks like he's already starting to pull ahead of the 82 now, Max Markoff, who's solid in the number three spot, at least 12 plus seconds now in the top three. Man, I would love to see Bailey make a run at Falk. He has immediately opened up that gap on Markoff. Now can he just make a run at your leader? Halfway point of this one, Mitchell Falk out front, Jordan Bailey second. It is Max Markoff in the number three spot. Looking at Cameron Cannon now finish uh, wrapping up fifth lap in the number four position as we check a little further back. Dylan Greer, the number 77, is fifth. Now to six, looking for Luke Hempen, Austin Winslow in the number seven, or eight spot. Derek Kelly, nine, and Wyatt Lionsmith followed them by Dylan Walsh. There is Jake Masterpool at last time around was 11th. Be looking for him now to be a top 10 quite possibly here as uh, those riders make their way by the finish line. Masterpool now in eighth place. Wow. You talk oh. about salvaging right here. If he can get a top five finish, that is, that would be huge. That would put him outside. It would be an outside shot, but man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is when the championship is being won right now for him. Look at the lap times. We were talking about the lap times speeding up, and you said Mitchell Falk having that 2044 there on the first lap. Well, look where right now the number 95 of uh, a Master Masterpool is. He did that in traffic battling people. He put down a 205, so give him some clear track. He can throw down a 203 or 204 probably. Oh, I, you know, he might even be able to bust into closer to the two-minute mark at this point if he continues to ride like that. We're watching on the uh, Racer TV broadcast. Jordan Bailey's putting together a good lap. He's got a heater going right now because he has absolutely gapped the number 82 of Markoff. There's Markoff there. You see him on the screen, and he nowhere even in the shot is Bailey. Oh, yellow flag out just one. ahead of Markoff. Let's see what's going on in that situation. Is it one of our lead riders that might be having some problems? Nope, that was the number 17. So I'm interested to look at the lap time this time around for the Jordan Bailey Kawasaki ride. There he is. There's Bailey. He has really, really put together a great lap, and we're going to be looking for that number 62 machine of Falk. Hopefully Bassett. Bailey can make a go of it. Fastest lap so far, 204.4 by Mitchell Falk, your leader there on lap number two. And at the near 13-minute mark here in Moto2 of the 250B class, it looks like, wow, a 205.9. So he is getting close within a uh, little more than a second of that fast lap that uh, Mitchell Falk turned there. And uh, pretty impressive stuff as this track continues. So a 205 that time for Bailey, he was three seconds faster than Falk with that 208. He's that cut that lead down to less than six seconds. He's 5.5 as we hit lap number six. So he's got about three more laps to do some work. And at that, you do the math. Yeah, we, at, you do the math. At the checker flag, that should be, they should be wheel to wheel coming down the stretch if, if things stay in that particular order and uh, at that particular timing and pace. And there's a look at Falk. He leaves the Ten Commandments. Bailey can see him now. Coming out of the Ten Commandments is Bailey. So Bailey's got an outside shot at catching Falk. Wow, the big question right now is, does Falk even realize that Bailey is rolling with a head, such a head full of steam right now as they motor through the uh, Storyland area of this if racetrack? If he doesn't know, his mechanic's going to let him know in a second. They can hear us. They see the lap time just like we do. Oh, for sure. And I'm sure that he can see it visually. The mechanics can see it visually. I'm sure that they're thinking a little bit and try not to alarm or put too much pressure on their rider, but whenever you've got a rider approaching at this kind of pace, uh, they need to be forewarned that something's going on. I'm sure Falk is going to get the word this time around. There's a look at Falk just coming through the screen, the bright orange KTM, the yellow Troy Lee Designs gear. There's Bailey on the Kawasaki. Bailey's kind of getting that. He can look up and see Falk now. Mm -hmm. Looking very a little bit of mistake there, maybe. 
I think he's looking pretty calculated right now in his moves and uh, trying to uh, choose his lines. He's got a little lap traffic that he's trying to traverse through, but uh, uh, like uh, hit the leader there, Mitchell Falk, they're uh, not dealing with a whole lot of that at this moment, so they're able to still pretty much uh, go anywhere they want to on this racetrack. Right down to the finish line turn, Falk will come across the stripe right in front of us. There's Bailey. A 5.5 second gap at the end of six and at the end of seven, when we see Jordan Bailey check in, he is now only 5.3, though it looks like uh, Falk visually. Falk speed. Yeah, and he must have really picked it up there in that last part of the lap, so he must have saw him coming, felt him coming, and now we're starting to see some of that lap traffic uh, maybe come into play in this one. Down past the mechanics area. Jordan Bailey really needs to clear these guys pretty quickly. Don't want to spend too much time and give that little bit of a chance that you have at taking the Moto win away. He's about five and some change, five seconds behind our leader, 62 Mitchell Falk on the Red Bull Orange Brigade KTM. Down to the Ten Commandments we go. Jake Masterpool now up to the number six spot for those of you following awesome along on the ride. number 95. Wow. That is fantastic. There goes Falk out of the Ten Commandments. He'll pick up the green Kawasaki, the yellow number plates of Jordan Bailey, who continues to try to get past some of the lap riders. We'll take a ride with Mitchell Falk. Having a great year. He's going to be one of the guys to beat in that A class whenever he graduates up. He'll go to the mini O's in the B or the A class later on this uh, year. There's Bailey, a young kid, just turned 16, got his driver's license. So clear the roads down there in Florida. He's coming through. And there's Falk. We'll be getting close to the two-lap board we have to here as we hit lap number seven. And we've been going for about 16 minutes or so, so we still got a little bit more time in the B class. There's Bailey one more time around that Rocky Mountain sweeper heading toward the actual Rocky Mountain. That's actually Ray from Rocky Rap Mountain MC. I, I heard you, you talking about over him. I, I think that Randy Poulter and Jeff Russell and the guys get together and lay Ray out every morning and, and bury him. Cover him up with and, sand. Yeah, and shape that jump real, out real quick. 62 of Falk sweeping around. Uh, we'll see if we're looking at maybe the uh, two lap board a, or a white flag this time around. And Falk hitting the finish line stretch here at Loretta Lens. This historic first day of motos. Moto number one getting started for the first time ever. Four hours delayed because the inclement weather that uh, well moved in actually yesterday at the end of uh, yesterday's practice. So Falk finding that speed late in the moto, I'm sure the mechanics board said, pick it up, he's coming, or whatever, whatever they use to motivate their guys. And he has found that speed, dropped that lap time from a 208 to a 205 that lap before, 207 that time around, a 210 for Jordan Bailey. So he's managing the race now for sure. He's got a good, comfortable eight-second lead. And Bailey may have said, all right, that was my run. Let's don't throw this thing away. We still got three more motos, two more motos to go. And Jake Masterful knocking on the door there, continues to pound out 209s there in traffic. He's got Dylan Greer in front of him on the number 77 machine. One rider goes right down in front of us. And that was Garrett Marchbanks again. Marchbanks having a rough go here, this moto. Crashed a couple of oh, times. Oh, down goes your leader over the bars. The 62 of Mitchell Falk getting crossed up, heading through Storyland. Can and he here's get the where bike up? Yeah. Wow, so he's trying to get it back up. It's still running. That's the fortunate thing for that him. But Bailey our leaders, we got by. new leaders now. Absolutely. Mitchell Falk, wow, he completely cuts half that section of the racetrack off that whole back section <laughs> back there. I'm sure that will probably look at. That was quite a bit of racetrack there. But regardless, Mitchell Falk had making the big mistake back there and giving it up. Jordan Bailey well, able to get on by, maybe even two positions by. And that would, I'm not sure that Markoff, he was about 15 seconds back, so he may have only lost one position. Look at this. This is how it goes. I mean, oh. he just a little, oh, right there. That, that kicker really just basically out of uh, the timing. Man. That right there, he just started swapping out a little bit and hit that, uh, that one big bump right there and just kind of tossed him over the bars there. And that's a heartbreaker for sure. But, man, you know this guy right here, Jordan Bailey's got to be feeling pretty uh, stout about that as he rounds the corner. Just trying to get around those laugh riders. And Jordan Bailey 
White flag lap. One more to go at the 19 and a half minute mark in this 250B class here today. I think we've seen several motos now decided on the last lap with a crash with the Jet Reynolds race, the, the Bees race, now this race. Not exactly how you want to script it, but holy cow, Jordan Bailey on his way to a moto win. And Mitchell Falk was cruise control. I got this thing. He's managing the race. And next thing you know, he's flipping off the side of the track. Well, one thing, you know, as you look back at uh, the incident there with Mitchell Falk, they have uh, about a 15 or 20 second lead over the rest of the field. So uh, him getting up and uh, laying back into the chase as quickly as he did, you know, I'm, I'm sure that uh, he was trying to salvage as much time as he possibly could, and he was able to do so. But the thing about it is that Jordan Bailey got around, and as he was coming with a head full of steam already, had he had another lap or two of opportunity, he was uh, trying his best to, to, to face him off head on like that. But uh, he gets the gimme in this one in moto number one. And, man, all the hard work, the effort, uh, like you were talking about, man, they made that dedication moving in uh, to the training facility down there, and it is uh, paying off in huge dividends for him now as he makes his way around this final lap in moto number one of this 250B class. And, He's on his way home to gold, at least in Moto 1. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, there's a lot of the competition in this class, as we saw uh, and are witnessing before our very well, eyes. I was just saying the track itself. That track is its own element. It yeah. has changed. That's a good point, too. There's Jordan Bailey lapping his teammate Garrett Marshbanks. Garrett Marshbanks having a Whoa, tough, tough mas go. Masterpool, sorry about that, Kevin, but I just noticed Masterpool, who was running f uh, sixth and closing in on fifth, has now dropped back to the number 21 position. Oh, bummer. Yeah. Masterpool is a top five guy, and all the guys going down and crashing what really setting himself up for a heck of a go towards those last two motos. But Jordan Bailey, the man of the hour, the number 32, Team Green, Monster Energy, MTF, Thor Rider, is going to, fingers crossed, <laughs> rabbit's foot, no black cats on the track. Yep. No count Maybe this one until it, the chicken hatches. The egg. There it is. Oh, there oh, we shoot. go. He did win it. How about that? Great job. Jordan Bailey is your winner. He is going to go have a word with Jason Wygant. Man, how much, how beautiful could a Sunoco Fuels checker flag look at than what that did to the number 32 that time around, man? Absolutely. I mean, like, I mean, he, like so many others, didn't get the start he was looking for whenever that one took off the, the gate like that. But. A lot of guys going to work out there, like we said. I mean, these are the motos that championships are built. Unfortunately, man, it looked like uh, that master pool was on his way to some uh, pretty big things taking place there. We see now that he's dropped all the way back as far as 28th. But, man, this guy right here rose above it all, track conditions and other riders on the race course, to take this Moto 1 win. It is the number 32 of Jordan Bailey. Bailey again out of Florida, and he's brought to us by the good friends at Monster Energy, Kawasaki, Team Green, Pro Circuit 7, Dunlop Alpen Stars, as well as Maxima Bell, Scott Henson, Renthal, and MTF, as you pointed out. We head down to the podium where Jason Wygant stands by. All right, we are down here on the podium. We're going to give a gold medal to our uh, moto winner who's trying to wash some of the mud out. Let me grab you right here, get you a gold. He's still trying to get cleaned up. Oh, he's got to get a hat. It's a lot of hardware. Well, that was a hard-earned uh, moto win. Had to do some battling for it. And let's crown him with a uh, gold medal now that he's got the proper sponsor product, hat, goggles, towel, drink. And there's the gold. Jordan Bailey had to fight for it, but he gets the Moto win. Let's hear it for our Moto One winner. All right, first of all, how gnarly were the uh, conditions out there? It seems like it's getting worse in some ways. Uh, it was definitely really rough from yesterday, but I uh, almost went down and hit the back of Max over there and got around him and uh, just told myself slow and steady wins the race and I was just plugging away plugging away being smart in every turn and it uh, worked out awesome who do you want to thank Jordan Lord Jesus Christ keep me safe my mom and dad everyone at Team Green Kawasaki for building an amazing bike I got a great start 7M Max Alpine Star Bell Helmet Scott Goggles Dunlop MTF Maxima Ethica uh, Pro Circuit just all my friends and family at home 
Yeah, thank you so much. Jordan Bailey, first moto win in a very stacked 250B class. All right. I got to go and grab a second and third. Should be Mitchell Falk. Hold on one second. I'll go get him. And we're already dropping the uh, gates for parade lap in the A class. Where's Falk? Well, this track is tough. Mitchell Falk led most of it. He's silver. Silver medal. He led most of it as a late crash. He ends up salvaging second. Let's hear it for Mitchell Falk. Well, you don't need me to remind you. You had it. Uh, what happened there? Did you have a crash? Yeah, I had a big crash going into the storyland. I just hit something. It hit me sideways. and. Uh, it just kind of went over and I couldn't do anything from there. Uh, a little bit shorter legs, so when a mistake like that happens, I can't save it. And uh, yeah, I went over and got smacked by it pretty good and uh, that definitely took the wind out of me. Good job salvaging second out of that then. Who do you want to thank, Mitchell? I'd like to thank the Charlie Designs team, uh, Tyler Kiefer, my manager for coming out, Hunter, my mechanic, my mom and dad. Uh, there's so many good guys. Charlie, 100%. Um, FMF, Dunlop, everyone that helps out the team to me, thank you. There it is, Mitchell Fox, second place, hard earned after a crash. And I'll look for a third place, it should be uh, Max Markoff. Let's bring Max on up. Let's go get those socks as muddy as we can as uh, we'll walk Markoff on up to the podium and that'll be third place. And we're coming up uh, big time. It's going to be the A-class here as they're almost complete with their sight lap. You're about to get muddy. All right, good ride for third place. It was a good battle actually between he and Jordan Bailey for a lot of this. We'll hand out a bronze medal. Let's hear it for Max Markoff. All right, hey, third, that's pretty solid. You had a good battle with Jordan there for a little bit. What was it like? Oh, it was good. You know, we woke up, or, you know, the rain woke me up last night, so I was a little like, ah, but, you know, we'll just send it. So uh, I knew I knew how important it was going to be to get a start, and I just uh, can't thank my Twisted Development KTM 250F enough. They uh, they got me that. I think I was first or second on the start. I'm not too sure. And, uh, yeah, it went good. Uh, just got a little pumped up, and then uh, I think, went, who was it, March Banks? I think when uh, March Banks or whoever, well, Bailey or whoever it was got by me, uh, I just kind of uh, got a little pumped up, and, Put on reserve, so uh, I played it smart. You can't win the championship in the first moto, you gotta, uh, but you can lose it. So uh, I think smarter, not harder, is going to get me this one. All right, who do you want to thank? Uh, yeah, I want to thank uh, my mom, my dad, my brother, uh, my mechanic Tyler, uh, Tim Ulinski for helping me out with Fitness Club of Max, helping me out with fitness too. Um, KTM Orange Brigade, Christy Hope, every, uh, Nathan over there, everybody. Uh, let's see here, we got Seven and Max, Bell Helmets, AP Designs, Oakley. Garnet, uh, Twist Development, Power Band Racing. They're getting my suspension going good this week and uh, can't thank them enough. Dunlop, uh, shoot, FMF, that whole shot power, right, Joel? And uh, yeah, let me see, I know I'm forgetting somebody. I gotta work on these things, so I guess I gotta uh, just thank everyone else who I forgot. All right, Max Markov taking third place in 250B. Congratulations. 